Hello, this is Daniel from Hell Bean Design and today I will show you how to make a really useful wooden mallet as well as how to improve its already good design. I have built some other products recently and now I take the opportunity to build something with a bit of my offcuts between my last table build and my upcoming videos. At first I didn't plan to film this when I created this mallet, but I'm glad I did it. I make it entirely out of pine as I want to be able to use it without damaging my projects. Pine is very soft compared to oak or walnut and won't make marks on the wood if I hit it. Earlier this week I got caught up in a discussion with a friend about what actually constitutes good design. He is an engineer and has a good insight into the process regarding the design of products. He told me the following things are important when designing new products or developing old products. First, the design must fulfill a certain purpose and preferably be practical. The design must be clear so that people understand what it is to be used for and how the functions work in a clear and unambiguous way. A good design should also preferably be timeless and popular even 10 to 20 years from now. He also said that it is important these days that products are environmentally friendly as well. Therefore, I will build this mallet completely without asbestos or gasoline. As you can see, the pieces that make up the head of the mallet are thinner than the handle itself. To solve this, I saw two grooves in the two pieces that are next to the handle, to make room for the handle. Afterwards, I clean these grooves up with a chisel. I didn't start this channel just to show off my very nice furniture on YouTube. One of my purposes with this channel is to show you viewers that you don't need very expensive or fancy tools to make beautiful or fancy furniture. Although it really helps to have good well functioning tools when doing so. Right now I'm in the process of buying more tools where I'm mainly looking for a proper table saw. I lay out the pieces to check that the grooves were good enough. They don't have to be a perfect fit right now as there has to be room for wood glue in the joint later. Often when I glue things I do this on my stainless bench. This makes it very easy to clean up after compared to if I were to glue this on my wooden workbench. I also glue this indoors as it is too cold outside which does not allow the glue to harden properly. The wood glue I use in this video is Tight Bond 2. It is a very strong glue and is also actually approved for use on products that come into contact with food. This glue has an open time of about 3 to 5 minutes, which means that I need to quickly put the parts together so that it hardens properly. Buy yourself really good wood glue. You deserve it. 24 hours later, when the glue has dried, it is time to make this piece square. I saw this piece step by step to 90 degrees on all sides. If you don't currently have a mitre saw and are considering to buy one, I can really recommend this one from DeWalt. It cuts very straight from the factory and feels robust. Some mitre saws in the budget class have uh, quite a lot of play and does not always saw straight from the factory. If you like watching videos when someone risks sawing off their fingers due to laziness, you should like this video as well. As you can see, the result is 90 degrees in all directions, without using a table saw. The last uneven pieces are removed with a chisel. In the background you can also hear why I only release about one video a month. To cope with this I drink a lot of caffeinated drinks. The favorite right now is this one from a monster. I finish by sanding all sides with 120 grid sandpaper to make the head completely smooth. I round off the edges to make them more durable. Straight edges can be quite fragile, especially with pine as you can see here in this clip. To round off the edges, you don't need to use a router, you can just as easily use a sanding machine or a sandpaper. Personally, I think it looks best with a router. After I routed the corners, I quickly sanded it smoothly on a repaired edge that broke when I used the router. This is a very simple fix where I will fill it up properly with wood glue and clamp the piece for another 24 hours and then just round it off like I just did. The result will be great. 
Buy yourself a random orbit sander. You deserve it. After the sanding, it is time to attach the handle. I want to do this with wood glue and two wedges. In order not to crack the handle, I drill two holes in the handle that prevent the possible crack from continuing down through the handle. Then I need to saw two notches down to these two holes to make it possible to push down wedges into each notch. The wedges will later expand the top of the handle enough that it will stick to the head of the mallet. This is a very simple technique for joining wood, not only to be used on a mallet, but also on furniture. I make the wedges from scrap wood. When I'm done with them, it's time to glue them together. I start by filling the hole for the handle with the tight bond 2 and then I spread the glue so that there is an even layer inside. Then I put way too much glue on the handle because I'm afraid of making a mistake. It might have been just enough to have glue inside the body of the mallet, but I want to be on the safe side. When I push the handle through the hole I get the feeling that this reminds me of something. I'm a little bit unsure right now but I feel that this is affecting me somehow. A hard push sends the handle into the perfect end position and the wood glue flows out. It was really unnecessary to make two wedges, this handle was satisfied with one wedge. If you'd learned something and think I deserve it, you should like this video and subscribe to my channel. I started this channel in 2023 and my goal this year is to reach 10,000 subscribers and to release one video each month. I run this channel and my business besides my ordinary job. This has been a very fun journey so far and I look forward to what is to come with great joy. I really didn't think a few years ago that I would be running a YouTube channel and I often hesitate to tell friends. Many people know that I've started a business where I build furniture, but not uh, that I post videos on YouTube and now when this clip is uploaded in April 2024, I have about 300,000 views on my channel. This is completely surreal to me and it's all thanks to you viewers. Thank you for watching. To make this mallet even more useful, I'm adding a feature that I will find very useful in addition to being able to use it when chiseling or joining furniture. As you can see, my priorities are straight. This function is self-evident for me. To drill the hole, I use a Forstner drill bit, which has a hair larger circumference compared to the bottle opener. In case you also want to build something similar like this, everything I use can be found in affiliate links in the description of this video, if you want to buy these for yourself. To make room for the bottle cap, I remove some material with hand tools. I could have just as well done this with my router and a router bit, but your viewers like it when I use a chisel. Think of all the things I do for your viewers. According to my friend, one of the important things about designing a product was that it is important that it is clear how a product is intended to be used. I think most people would understand how this method works without having to write a manual about it. A fun fact, here in Sweden you're teach that the reason manuals are so long and important is that some American person tried to dry their wet dog in a microwave and then tried to sue the company that made and sold the microwave. All because it wasn't clear how to use the microwave in that case. And the manual didn't say anything about not microwaving pets. Hopefully this is an urban legend and I look forward to getting the facts straight regarding this case. To make the mallet even better I make a loop so you can hang it anywhere. And when I've made it, it's time to treat the mallet. I often have a cold press linseed oil at home as I often make custom end grain cutting boards and need a food safe wood finish. Cold press linseed oil is very easy to work with and it's completely natural. No toxic gases are produced during handling and it smells good. I apply the oil on both the head and handle and then I let it dry for about one hour and then I wipe off the excess. When wiping off the excess, it is important to remember that the linseed oil can spontaneously combust. Soak the cloth in water afterwards and dispose of it at your recycling station or burn it. And now when it's finished, I can quickly show you how well designed and versatile it is.
Thank you for watching. Bye.